the word of God, he brought Israel out of Egypt. And by his word, he established them. So the word of God is the spirit of Christ. And the spirit of Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And what we mean is prophetic. Yeah. If you understand these things, we do wonders. Miracles, signs, and wonders. But you don't understand what say. Come one on one with the prophet. When I see you, I'll prophesy. When you come, I will see you and I will. I never see you. I never see you. I never prophesy. So I think we have to change our our things because if we catch fish, we have to use the beats that the fish will swallow. By the time you come, God will encounter you. And you see the spirit of grace operating your life. And God will make all grace abound unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. All grace abound unto you. Uh, 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 I expect more people to join us in this meeting. Maybe some of us are going to be coming in. I don't like I want people to hear. That's why we are also uh, putting it on air. So that others who are not throughout other parts of the world can listen. Hallelujah. Today we are here. And today we are having uh, the national, the international president of the ministers, uh, New Testament Ministers Network. Now, the New Testament Ministers Network is a network of ministers of the gospel, which includes you all over West Africa, starting from Nigeria, Ghana, and beyond. Hallelujah. Amen. What are we doing? We are just going about to let people know what we have done this morning. So this afternoon is here to give us the look down. And I believe that there are prophetic words that God is going to be releasing. You'll be hearing God telling you specific things as he's speaking, as he concerns your own life. I'm telling you to prophesy to my life. And you might to do it. You might say that to but from what he was saying, I was getting prophetic words. I got exact word that I needed that day to give me. When I was doing that, I was not doing it. Hallelujah. So he does it in various places, various churches, various towns and uh, cities in Nigeria. And then they also have what they call the uh, couples get together. It's a special, uh, uh, this is Lamy Day. Williams, that's a TV David as a Williams. Hallelujah. Amen. And then, those the ministers that work also run what we call the School of the Spirit. The School of the Spirit is an online school. It's not the one you register to pay school fees. It is what, the, like we're talking now, the class is going on. It's on Facebook and uh, WhatsApp. We have faculty members who teach. Most of the things that will be taught in conference in the fire various locations, your churches, your meetings, your place of work. Hallelujah. Without wasting time, we welcome Pastor Timmy David. Hallelujah. 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 Father, let your fire fall here today. Let every heart that is present here be new passion with a new fire from you, Lord. Let the love of Christ be expressed through us to the world around us. I pray in the name of Jesus that there will be to set a fire upon the earth. I wish that it be already kindled. Father, by the reason of this meeting, let a fresh fire fall upon this nation in the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything written about me is Thank you. 
Is written concerning you. Hallelujah. Please let me celebrate Prophet George for allowing us here today. Please let me celebrate him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Father God, thank you for your being here. Thank you for having us here today. You have such a lovely place. It's a world class place. Hallelujah. A place of excellence. I'm so excited to be here. And I pray that the work that God has committed to your hand will continue to advance. In the name of Jesus. Let me celebrate Bishop Timothy of Bassi. Hallelujah. For putting this program together. Hallelujah. Amen. And our assistant director, um, Dr. Linus Ado, please let me celebrate him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Our mama that has been taking care of this since yesterday, please let me celebrate her, even though she is here. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Please let me celebrate somebody beside you. Amen. Let me celebrate that person sitting beside you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, um, I'll be brief, but it's going to be powerful. Now, I have a gift for everyone that is present here, uh, a copy of this book. Uh, please get the, back, get the back, bring the books out, and let me give everyone present here a copy of this book. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is time to know God for yourself. Know God for yourself. Stop following your pastors blindly. This book is a book that God put in my heart to write, having preached this gospel around for a little while. But I think it will bless you, it will bless everyone around you. If you read it, you can pass it on to others to read. My contact is there. Uh, if you want to be part of the School of the Street online class, just you see my contact there, just send me a, a WhatsApp message saying add me to School of the Street or add me to SOS, add me to SOS with your name and let me know that you are requesting from God. You will be added, praise the Lord. And you will get messages from our ministry from time to time. Hallelujah. Online. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Are you sure that everybody up? Everybody up? Are you taking your own copy? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, Ghana is a beautiful place. It's my first time in Accra, Ghana. 
Hallelujah. Are you a loving people? Hallelujah. Africa are loving people. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so excited to be here today to bring the good news of Christ to us. This gospel will be preached everywhere, all over the nations of the heart. Hallelujah. So, we're going to be... Uh, so, the theme of our conference is concerning Jesus. Concerning Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's start. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew. If you can help me with the Bible, I use the New Living Translation. You can put it up on the screen. Uh, Matthew chapter 11. And I read from verse 7. And as they departed, Jesus began to say to the multitude concerning John, What did you go into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go to see? A man clothed in soft garments? Indeed, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what did you go to see? A prophet? Yes, I said to you. And more than a prophet, for this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face. You will prepare, who will prepare your way before you? Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Among all those that are born of women, there are not been anyone greater than John the Baptist. That's from me. How will Jesus say that John the Baptist was greater than Abraham? Abraham is called the father of what? The father of faith. Abraham is the father of faith. Yet Jesus said, of all men, Let's see the verse again. Praise God. What verse is that? 11. Verse 11. Okay. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women. How many people? Apart from Adam, every other person is born from who? Of a woman. So Jesus was saying, John the Baptist is the greatest or was the greatest among all that was born of a woman. Hemok walked with God and God took him. He disappeared. He was no more. Jesus said John the Baptist was greater than him. About Abraham, he said John the Baptist was greater than him. About Moses, you know Moses that parted the Red Sea. Moses that brought plagues upon the uh, Egyptians. Moses that, uh, you know, his rod swallowed the rod of the magicians. He performed so many miracles. Those miracles, in fact, I don't know if they can happen. Amen. <laughs> right? Passing the Red Sea and human being walking on, you know, on water as if it's just a playground because the water parted into two. Hallelujah. And the Bible says John was greater than Moses. What of Elijah? Elijah, the man that called down fire from heaven and killed, you know, you can imagine the president of Ghana asking 50 uh, soldiers to go and arrest somebody. And the man stayed on the camel. He said, if I be a man of God, let fire fall and consume you. And the whole 50 people died. Hallelujah. And he sent another battalion. And the man killed another 50. The third battalion came and started begging. We know you have power. Amen. That's Elijah. Elijah. But Jesus said John the Baptist was greater than Elijah. Moses was the giver of the law. The pastor of the children of Israel that was in the wilderness. Hallelujah. 
But yet, God said, John the Baptist was greater than him. What made John the Baptist great? What made him unique? Hallelujah. That's what we want to examine today. Now listen. John the Baptist did not perform one miracle. Did you read in your Bible what John the Baptist did? One miracle he never performed. John the Baptist, no miracle, no signs, no wonders. Yet, the Bible says the ministry of John the Baptist was the greatest. I will see the reason why it was the greatest. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of uh, John. The Gospel according to St. John. Praise God. John. Are you there? Chapter 1. John chapter 1. Let's read from verse 6. John 1 from verse 6. Okay. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Continue. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. Continue. It was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light that lighted every man that comes into the world. Hallelujah. The ministry of John the Baptist. Can you see how John was introduced? John the Baptist, that is his ministry. He was to show men Christ. He was to reveal Christ to all men. Not just to the Jew, because it is to the Jew, then from the Jew to what? To all the world. Friends, I know that many of us came into ministry for different reasons. Some people want to be pastors or prophets because pastors are always very rich these days. Okay. So, for some, it's a way of escape from poverty. Hallelujah. For some, well, if I to get work, no easy. Let me join pastoral work so that at least my needs can be met. For some, they want to be like Mesa Otago, very great man of God. People want to be like Bishop David Oyelepo. You know Oyelepo? Fantastic man of God. People want to be like Pastor Enoch Adeboy. Very powerful man of God. Okay? There is nothing wrong in aspiring to be great. But for ministry, the only reason why anyone should be in ministry, especially after John the Baptist, is to reveal Christ. There is no other ministry apart from the ministry of revealing. Let me tell somebody there is no other ministry apart from the ministry of revealing Christ. Hallelujah. Now, of all men born of a woman, there is no one greater than John the Baptist. Not even the one that performed miracle signs and wonders. Signs and wonders, if it is not going to introduce people to Christ, is useless. You know what a sign? A sign is to show that something is going on. Wonders is to show that there is a power that is greater than what is being seen. Hallelujah. That's the essence of signs and wonders. Any sign and wonder that does not change the heart of men is useless. Do you understand? Any sign, wonders, miracle that does not change the heart of men is useless. A prophet will come and say, Can I prophesy? 
said, prophesy, man of God. And it tells you the number of your passport. What is that to us? Useless. Hallelujah. It amounts to nothing because it's not revealing Christ. <laughs> it's revealing the number of passport. It's not revealing Christ. It's useless. Hallelujah. So, Jesus was equating the ministries that came before John the Baptist to the ministry of John the Baptist. It's not their personality. It's talking about the assignment, the importance of their ministry. Ministry is the assignment God committed to your hand. Hallelujah. In John chapter 10, Jesus said, I am the way. I am the door. Everyone that came before me are thieves. And he was talking about Moses, Elijah, and all of them. You thought he was talking about the devil. He was not talking about the devil. He was talking about the prophet that came before me. Everyone that came before me. Now, when he said they are thieves, he's not literally calling them thieves. He was using an illustration that thieves comes through the window. That nobody, because he is the door. So anyone that came must have passed somewhere else. Do you understand? He's saying, I am the true shepherd. I am the number one of the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is all about him. The kingdom of God is all about him because for every kingdom there must be a king. Without a king, there is no kingdom. So when we talk about propagating the kingdom of heaven, we are talking about proclaiming the king. Proclaiming the name of the king. Proclaiming the power of the king. Proclaiming the purpose of the king. Hallelujah. He said, go and tell them the kingdom of heaven has come upon you. The kingdom cannot come without the presence of the king. Hallelujah. So, all of them that came before me, they are thieves and robbers. Why did he say that? He said, I'm the true shepherd. He said, the true shepherd is the only person that laid down his life for the sheep. He said, everyone, they are just hired. And true, they were hired. Moses was hired by, by God. Amen. Elijah was hired by all the prophets. They were sent, you know, in order to prepare the way for the one that is coming. Hallelujah. So, they, they, Jesus was saying they were not the big, they were not the real deal. That he is the real deal. He is the door to the sheepfold. Now listen, where I'm going is not far, but I want us to just take it one step after the other. Um, so that we can establish this truth once and for all and progress after today. Verse 10 of that same John. John chapter 1. Let's read verse 10 to 12. He was in the world. Now, the reason why we, why, why did we need the ministry of John the Baptist to reveal Jesus to the world? Now, okay, that's the reason is what we are reading in verse 10. Verse 10. He was in the world. And the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. Somebody created something. What he created does not know that. Does not even know who created it. Can you imagine? He was in the world. He came into the world he created. The creation that he created did not recognize him. Praise God. You know why? Because he left his glory and put on the form of man. They were seeing him as man. They were seeing him as one of the prophets. They didn't know that he is the author of life himself. They didn't know that God himself had come in the flesh to be with mankind. Do you understand? Now, he said, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them gave the right to become children of God. 
to those who believe in his name, who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of the will of God. So the ministry of John the Baptist was to introduce G I mean, men to Jesus. Why? Their carnal mind cannot recognize him, even as we speak. When they came in trying, they did not have the purpose of when they died that has gone to them. And now they are preaching. They cannot even see this guy. How will they recognize it? Do you understand what I'm saying? So it is not something you encounter with your carnal knowledge. It is not something you encounter with your feeling. It is something you believe. You believe in the name of the Son of God with your heart, then you can accept it. So it takes the revelation. Of Christ to mankind in order for them to be able to receive him. So, literally speaking, when Jesus was physically present, John the Baptist needed to point men to Jesus that this is the Messiah. This is the one that all the prophets had written about. Are you getting me? That was the ministry of John the Baptist. And the ministry. That ministry, Jesus called it the greatest of all ministry. Hallelujah. How many of us want to be great in the kingdom of God? You want to be great in the kingdom of God. May you not labor in vain for pastors and ministers that are here. Because there are many pastors of large churches that will receive no reward. I'm serious. They will receive very little reward in them. And I'm, I'm, I'm just very serious. I'm not, I will show you from scriptures. Pastors of very big ministries, pastors that does miracle signs and wonders. Pastors, these ones, they, do, they are not using juju, but they can see, like, you know, uh, prophet Elijah. They are prophets in their lives. Hallelujah. They are great prophets. But see what you guys are saying? They are not great that. Their reward is not as much as that. That's what it means. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> are you getting what? Are you getting something? We are talking about concerning Jesus. So it's just introduction to concerning Jesus. Hallelujah. So the ministry of revealing Christ to the world is the most important ministry before the death and after the death. So if your ministry is not like the ministry of John the Baptist, you are not greater than John the Baptist. Amen. You know what Jesus said? He, he said until now, but he said the least in the kingdom of heaven is what? Is greater than me. Hallelujah. So you are not crossed into that those that are greater than John the Baptist. I'm saying that we have even greater grace than John the Baptist to do the work of John the Baptist, introducing men to Christ. John the Baptist could just do it, you know, by the unction of the Holy Ghost, but now we have the Holy Ghost dwelling on our inside. We have the teacher himself helping us are you getting me? Because John the Baptist, at the end of the day, when he was in prison, even before Jesus said in that Matthew, that we read, he said, Please, he said, this time, they, they should go and ask Jesus, Are you the Christ or should we wait for another after revealing Christ to men? Do you understand? I mean, after showing men Christ, he was now doubting, Are you the Christ or should we wait for another? And Jesus said, Go and tell John. Even though when you are revealing me to men, it was not because I have done any signs and wonders, because Jesus had not even performed any miracle. As at the time that John the Baptist was pointing John, I mean men, to Christ. God told him, whosoever that the Spirit will come upon as you baptize people in the river Jordan, that is the Christ. And that's one of the reasons why John, John the Baptist was baptizing people. It was not for, it was baptizing people into repentance, but the purpose, the major purpose, he said, upon anyone that the Spirit will come upon, that is the Messiah. He didn't know, but he said, I did not know, but God told me 
that he upon which this spirit comes upon, that is he. And as John baptized him, the spirit of the living God came upon Jesus, and there was a voice from heaven that said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Hallelujah. So the declaration is that don't hear any other person apart from this, my son. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, uh, John the Baptist was revealing Christ to people. What is the purpose of your ministry? What is the mission statement of your ministry? Some people who say, you know, their mission statement is to make people rich. Hallelujah. God has sent me as a prophet to the nation to make my people rich. Hallelujah. God has called me as a what's the purpose? Let's check it. Go and check every ministry. What's the purpose of their ministry? The purpose of every ministry is one. If your purpose is not aligned to that one, you have already missed it. I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Praise God. It doesn't matter how big your ministry is. It doesn't matter how long you have been in ministry. It doesn't matter what experience you have in ministry. We have one purpose, and I will show us from Ephesians. Hallelujah. So my point is, let's see. When John the Baptist began to introduce his own ministry, verse uh, 19, St. John chapter 1. Now, this is the testimony. Testimony means the confession of John. The statement that John made about himself. Or what you can call the profile of John the Baptist. Okay? Now, this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Many people are claiming to be the Christ today. Now, see, John said, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? What then? Are you a liar? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he said, No. Then they said to him, Who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say about yourself? Let me ask you, remember, what do you say about yourself? You don't always anything. Let me ask another person, what did you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight it's the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, Now, those who were sent were from the Pharisees. Okay, let's stop there. He said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Another translation will say, Prepare the way for the Lord. Showing men the Lord. Hallelujah. Showing men the Lord. That's his mission statement. They ask him, what, who are you? And John never failed in describing his assignment. His assignment was to show Jesus to the world. Hallelujah. Praise God. He said, I am the voice of the man in the wilderness. He started like that. Many of us are, you know, sometimes you look at your ministry and you look at yourself as if you are a voice in the wilderness. Nobody, you are not in the city. Nobody is listening to you. Nobody is hearing you. But you know that God has put an assignment in your heart. And you are declaring that assignment. That was like John. Hallelujah. He said, I'm the voice of one in the wilderness. He said, why? Who do you go to the wilderness to see? He said, I, the whole Jerusalem, the whole uh, region, everyone in that region went to the wilderness to listen to John and to be what? To be baptized of him. Yet, John did not do one miracle and sign. So they were not looking for miracles. They were not looking for signs. They were hungry for Jesus. Hallelujah. They are what? They were hungry for Jesus. There are people around Africa and the world today that are hungry for Jesus. But are we ready to reveal Christ 
to the world. Are we ready to point them to Christ? Are you getting it? See, your ministry may not be spectacular like every other person's ministry. But the most important ministry is the ministry of who? Revealing Christ to the world. If your ministry is revealing Christ to the world, then it can grow from just the voice in the wilderness to the person that everybody is coming to listen to. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Do you understand? So forget about if I preach this thing, will people come? Many of us want to teach what people want to hear. John was not teaching what people want to hear. John was going to just teach one thing, revealing them to Christ. John was not performing miracles. He was not going to show any wonders. He was just showing men. He was just showing Christ to men or pointing men to Christ. Hallelujah. That's his assignment. That's his ministry. And that's the kind of ministry that all of us need to learn, need to have. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4. Quickly, Ephesians chapter 4. From verse 10. Everyone that is called into the ministry, this is the job description for everyone called into the ministry. The job description. Verse 10. He mm. who descended is also the one that ascended far above all things, that he might feel all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers, for the equipping of the saints. So the work of the pastor, the apostle, the teacher is to do what? To equip the same for the work of the ministry. Are you getting me? So the pastor is not necessarily the person doing the work of the ministry. He's not the only person doing the work of the ministry. The pastor is supposed to, is supposed to do what? Equip the saints so that they can do the work of ministry. If you are in a church that you are not being equipped to do the work of the ministry, you are not under a good pastor. Are you getting it? See, you shall know the truth. Only the truth will set you free. The reason why people are in bondage today in Africa, there are so many lies that are sold to them as the truth. The truth is the word of God. Jesus is, Jesus is not just one of the truths. He said, I am the truth. So the more you know about Christ, the only thing that is truth in the Bible. Now listen, the Bible as a whole book is not all the word of God. You think the Bible is just the word of God. So some people read the Bible and anything they see there, they believe everything is the word of God. The devil also spoke in the Bible, amen, and Judas went and hung himself. And the Opa and Lava said, Brother, please do go and do likewise. Amen. <laughs> do you understand? So, my point is if you read the book of Job, you will see where men were speaking to Job. And you read it as in the scripture. It's not scripture, it is the friend of Job that was speaking to Job, counseling him. At a point, his wife also counseled him and said, Let me know. And said, curse God and die. Do you, you see? So you can't say that is just the word of God. So the Bible contains history, histories of the Jew. The Bible also contains stories. History, stories. Inside of those stories and history lies the scriptures. Do you understand? The Bible contains what? For example, in the beginning, why are you there? God made heaven and earth. That's history. Is it not history? God made heaven and earth, and the heart was without form and void. And God said, so Genesis helped us to know what happened in the beginning. But in the history that is written in this book lies the scriptures. Now, as you read the Bible, what you are supposed to be looking for are the scriptures. Jesus said, you search the scriptures. 
How? Because they were reading the Bible, searching the scriptures, thinking that in the scriptures they will find eternal life. Not knowing that the scriptures were written about Christ and they seen Christ, yet they did not accept Christ. Do you understand? Now, Jesus was using that to tell them that you search the scriptures, thinking that when you get the scriptures, you will have eternal life. Not knowing that the scriptures actually spoke about rising light. Is it so sensitive? Hallelujah. Amen. So, my you look for in the scriptures are the things that are written concerning Christ. That is what you find the word of the Tanada. Hallelujah. Now, when the prophet prophesied, sometimes they give prophecy. David, Moses, and they were talking about Christ. Many of them didn't even know. They were just talking. It is when people began to read the prophecies of the prophet. And all of them only prophesied what they saw. This one saw the face. This one saw the head. This one saw the nose. This one saw the back. They did not understand. It was when you bring all the scriptures together that it now begins to do what? To make sense to them. Hallelujah. That's why the disciples will say, this is what was written in the book of Isaiah. Are you getting me? Concerning the Christ. Paul will talk about this is what was written concerning Jesus in the book of Jeremiah concerning the Christ. So by the time they put everything together, they know that even though a Isaiah prophesied about somebody that is going to do something, a Jeremiah also said about a man. Abraham spoke about the man. Moses himself said, A prophet will God give huh, that will come after me. He you should listen to. That was what Moses said. Then somebody kept that to her. They are not looking for that prophet. Another person said, you know, unto us a son is given. Unto us a child shall be born. They were looking for the child. They, they all prophesied differently, you know, based on what they saw. But none of them had the full knowledge of the gospel, of who Christ is. That is why when John came, they began to point out. They could not use the scriptures. They did not have the understanding. Hallelujah. Praise God. But the scriptures spoke about Christ. Now, many of us are using scripture to teach something that the scripture did not teach. They teach the scriptures speak about, about Christ. So we cannot use the scripture to teach what the Bible does not originally use it to teach. The Bible cannot mean today what it did not mean yesterday. Do you understand? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and what? And forever. The Bible cannot mean today what it did not mean yesterday. Write it down. The Bible cannot mean today what it did not mean yesterday. So no one in this era can have his own interpretation. The Bible says no scripture is of what? Private intact. So you cannot interpret the Bible privately and say God gave you a special revelation. That is different from what the apostles explained the scriptures to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? They are not getting it. There are people today that read the Bible and say, oh, they found something very powerful and they come to share it. Congratulations to them. Hallelujah. Now listen. The foundation of the church is laid upon his holy apostles and prophets. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19 and 20. The foundation of the church is laid upon his holy apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Jesus did not lay the foundation of of the church. What did I say? Somebody is looking at me. They want to throw stone at me. Please help me. <laughs> Amen. You are not at me. Okay, let's see Ephesians. Let's read it. So, because what I'm saying may be a bit strange to you. Jesus did not lay the foundation for the church. How? The church was not born until after his death. So, there was no church until Jesus died. Resurrected and went to heaven, and the Holy Ghost came. The church started 
in Acts chapter 8. When the Holy Ghost came and people became born again, Peter, John, James, Matthew, throughout their lifetime with Jesus, they were not born again. Do you know that? They became born again when the Holy Ghost came. We need to know that. Now, who is a born again Christian? Let's define it. A born again Christian is someone who has the Holy Ghost living in him. A born again Christian is someone who the Holy Ghost is living inside of him. So, no one was born again until the Holy Ghost came. The Holy Ghost is what gave back to us our recreated spirit. When you had the good news, the Holy Spirit removed your whole nature and create a new spirit within you. I will give you a new spirit. That's what he was talking about. That's what Isaiah was talking about. Praise God. So, the disciples of Jesus, they were not Christians. They were, I mean, sorry, they were not born again. They became born again after Jesus had left. So they were the ones that Jesus by the apostles of Christ, not Moses. You cannot teach what Moses taught his own church in the wilderness. You come and teach the church of Jesus. Amen. Moses had his own church. The Bible referred to it in Hebrews as what? The church in the wilderness. Do you understand? All of those people in that church, they were not born again. The church of Jesus are the church of the saints. Those that are born again. They are different. Old Testament is different from what? New Testament. Do we get it? Yeah. So, my point is, the New Testament believers, the foundational doctrine for the church was laid by the apostles and the prophets. Therefore, there is no church that can add to the doctrines of the apostles. You can have your own practice. You can have your own guidelines. But don't call those things the doctrines of Christ. For example, in some churches, women sit on this side, men sit on that side. That's your church. It's not the church of Christ. In the church of Christ, Jesus said, there is neither male you see? In the church of Christ, God says, there is what? There is neither male nor female. There is neither Jew nor Greek. In the synagogue, the synagogue of the Jews, what happens is, you can only, I mean, you know, when you go to the synagogue to worship, hallelujah, it's only the Jews. The Jews does not relate with the Gentiles. You must be circumcised. Before you can be accepted as, you know, part of the Pharisees or the Sadducees. You, you get my point? But in the, in, the, in the church of Jesus, he said, neither circumcision avails anything, nor uncircumcision avails anything. But think that you are supposed to read? No. But the teachings of the apostles will help you to have the knowledge of the scriptures. That is, the understanding of Galatians, Colossians, Ephesians, Philippians will help you to understand the writings of the prophets and the writings of Moses. Amen. Because all of them were writing about Christ. They had many errors trying to describe who he was. Their writings were made of plenty of errors. Are you getting me? Because their own personality was part of their writings. They were not perfect. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews that Jesus is the express image of the invisible God. He is the only one that can tell us the true picture of who God is. He said, if you have seen Christ, you have seen him. Even Jesus said it when he was on earth. If you have seen me, you have seen my father. Nobody can describe our father. Do you understand what I'm saying? Moses cannot describe Jesus effectively. Elijah did not. The only professor, they only spoke a part of it. It is when you combine everything together that you can have a whole picture of it. But in the New Testament, but a believer, you know what a believer is? You will first believe. 
A believer first believe. That's why you call you believer. You will never see anything really in your life without first of all believing it. A believer in Christ believe all that Christ says without seeing it first. When you believe it, then you can see it. Remember, when Jesus appeared to his disciples, there was one person that was not, <laughs> he was not there, Thomas. He said, I will not believe except I see him face to face. He said, even if I see him, I still need to put my hand in that wound and by his side so that I will be sure because he was there when he was crucified. He knew there was a hole and there was an hole in his hand and by his side. So you said Jesus rose. Don't forget Jesus told them that he was going to die and he was going to rise again. Thomas did not believe. If Thomas did not believe, Thomas will go to hell for not believing. You don't get it. It's not about what, it's not, it's not a miracle of provision for Thomas. It's about salvation for Thomas. For with the heart, man believe unto salvation. What do we believe? We must believe that Jesus Christ died and was raised from the dead. Are you there? Or you must believe? That is why they call us what? Believer. There is no religion that is religion of believer. It's different. Our own belief, saints, believers in Christ, they are not religious people. They live in the reality of life. Do you understand? Now, look at it. You must first believe everything that the scripture said about you, you must believe it. Don't take the word of your pastors for it when it contradicts the scriptures. You will be doing it. It's just like Okay, your father wrote a will and said there is a building in Lagos, in Abuja. Number 55, Gaki. Eh? For you, and your name is there. And somebody claimed to you and preached to you that you are a poor person. Your father does not leave anything for you. And you go and believe that person. Who will you believe? Your father or someone that just came to you? Do you understand what I'm saying? The scriptures is the will of God concerning you. Is the revelation of what Christ has done. As you read about Christ, you are reading about yourself. As you read the epistles, you are just reading yourself. To be right. I'm telling you, everything that is written there is written about you. That's why we go sing, sing that song. Demons tremble at my presence. Why? You shall cast out devils in my name. You shall. And he was talking about you. He said, all powers in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And I behold, I give unto you power. If he said he gave you power, when did he collect it? That means you have, you are in possession of what? Of power. Which type of power? The power that created the heavens and the earth is inside you. Oh my God. If the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, you don't understand the word of God. God said, the spirit that raised Christ is in you. Better believe it. I believe it. That is that spirit that we, you know what they call action? He is the spirit that actions people. Not because you live right or you live, you don't live forever. Do you believe that the spirit that is Christ is in you now? Yes. Now, having established that, that spirit can is the power. God does not have any other power apart from the spirit. So that only speak. What you believe affects how you think. What you believe affects how you live. You don't know. So, for example, there are things I don't do. If you see the other side, you will not be afraid to die. To go, instead of I'm in between two, whether to go or to stay. I don't even know whether to go. But he said, if I stay, it is for your benefit so that I will use that opportunity to teach the church. And we need people to take the gospel. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And also not to have any form of fear. Number one, what you must not have is what? Fear. Number two, what you must not have is guilt. Those two things, fear and guilt, is the work of the enemy. The Bible says we have not been given the spirit of fear. 
believe in Christ. Book of those who does not believe in the two books. There is no works there. Ephesians chapter 2 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not of works. Read your Bible. It is not of works. Lest you boast that I, some people think that it is their faith that is in Christ that is making them to stand. So they want to increase their faith. They, 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 are, they look at some men of God and they think and they have store of it and they want to do what those men of God did so that their faith can grow to be like them. We have only one faith. The Bible says we have only one God. We have only one that is that brother still in faith. If you are born again, you have faith. See how the, see, don't read the Bible and believe what the Bible says. Meditate on it and you understand what the Bible says. The Bible is deeper than you think. It's saying that if you are, let's read it so that any part is subject. Romans chapter 10. I don't want to, so that I won't say too many things that uh, you pass over you. Okay? Let's see, I think from. Uh, How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So, people cannot call on them because the elder man said, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Shall be saved. The elder man. Yet, the most difficult thing for people. You know why? It takes faith to be saved. Not works, nothing apart from believing in him, then you are saved. But how shall they believe? How shall they call? On his name, not believing. You must believe before you can receive. Now, how can they call on him in whom they have not believed? How can they believe without hearing about him? How can they hear without a preacher? It is when you hear the good news that faith comes to you. The grace for salvation does not belong to us. The faith for salvation does not belong to us. He said, whosoever call upon him shall be saved. But we did not have the capacity to come. Therefore, he sent messengers to us. So that when we hear, then we can receive faith. Then we can receive the grace. Because it takes faith to receive. And he helps you and tell you what to choose. That's the way it is. He gave us the faith so that we can receive. That's the good news. The good news about Christ. I mean, for example, what people that we cannot ever do for ourselves. There are the things that the grace of God has done for us. It takes faith to receive from God. Everything that God has promised you. The Bible says Christ has to be in villages around go and preach. And I said to them, any city you enter, Knock at the door. Say peace unto you. If they accept you, and eating and drinking whatsoever I said before you. Have you talked about it? Like I came to Ghana without knowing Bishop. I just came and knocked at what is done. <laughs> See what you thought. I have sent someone ahead of you. Another person is to provide for you because God is the one providing, but if we use human vessels. Do you understand? Praise God. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. It's by faith. It's by the problem when he sent his disciples, he said, Don't carry pots. He deliberately told them, I don't need your money. I use my money to fund my mission. Don't carry pots. Don't carry scripts. Don't beg people. I will provide for it. Hallelujah. You know, a friend called me and said, We were just talking. He's one of my partners in Canada. We were just talking. He said, there is a car that he has bought. That he will one for me. I didn't ask him for a car. I didn't. God knows my heart. I need a car. You never they will give you a key of car that you never, without genius, by just teaching and preaching the truth, without begging. Somebody came and said, Pastor, the Lord told me to give you $500. Just a few weeks ago, $500 in my mouth. 
And God knows that we needed it. Do you understand? I have my two kids in private university. Will you blame me? Nigerian University says how many days they are not in session. Do you want to blame me? So I need to trust God. Else my own sons will just despise me and despise my ministry. Amen. So I need to trust God to put them in private. So one is in covenant, one is in a, a backup. Praise God. <laughs> The last, you know, the first one we, we, we managed to put in. By the time we were putting the second one, I said, hey, don't be saying we won't carry the table, we don't be carrying so. Do you understand? But you know, the last time, the, this last session, 50%, more than, I mean, more than 50% of about 3 million dollars that we spent were gifts. Not begging. Support, 300, 500, 300, like that. And I had to. Do you understand? Yeah. I don't run a church. I mean, this is not a church. So how do we get money? So no type no offering. So how do we run the church? How do we run the ministry? Do you understand how it is? So it is trusting God. Bishop knows how much program we have. We are having a, a, a minister's conference in Lagos. It's going to be attracting, normally it attracts, it's been there. Over 150 ministers. And it's with banquet. So we are going to prepare food, you know, for everybody. We are coming back to Ghana by this of God. To come and organize a bigger program. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So that one is a banquet. You know, pastors are supposed to pay 10,000 to attend, but almost 100% of those tickets we give, we give, normally give out free. And people will come. Hallelujah. We are having one in September. So we keep running programs. And when we run our program, there is no fundraising. That somebody there give 50,000. No, we don't do it. Listen, I'm not saying that it's wrong. To raise from in a church, especially when it's a church. As a pastor, when you are when you have needs, you will come out to do what? To tell the people the need and encourage them to give. That's the best we can do. We can't force people. The Bible says everybody that gives you give from what they propose in their hearts. So I'm not the one that will tell you how much to give. You propose in your hearts. Hallelujah. You propose in your hearts. I was teaching on so a friend of mine just saw me and said, That's why you founded this ministry. And he said, every month I'll be giving you 50, 50,000 to support this work. All the way from Canada. I have partners in Canada. So the gospel is the part I know that God will supply for his work. So we are coming back. To the poor. This time around, Bishop, we will go radio, go announce. We will do it like Lagos, do banquets, and I will bring pastors here. It's not only me. You understand? So we are going. The last time we wanted to come, you know, I wanted to bring, you know, like 20 ministers. We just want to come and have fellowship with our minister. It's a network. Iron Sharp Letter. So as we minister together, we will benefit and something will prosper. Hallelujah. Okay. So let's wrap up. I said the grace does not belong to you. The faith does not belong to you. Hallelujah. So we need to do what? We need to trust God. Friends, the question will be, if we begin to teach Jesus, will people come? If we begin to teach Jesus, will it be interesting? Ah. Then leave ministry. The reason for ministry is Christ. It is the ministry of Christ. The ministry we are doing is the continuation of what Jesus started. Nobody had ministry of his own. Oh, you have your own ministry. Congratulations to you. Because you have already determined what you want to do. Your purpose, I was asking what is the purpose and mission statement of your ministry? To raise millionaires. To raise leaders. That's not the purpose of ministry. It is to show uh, Jesus to men. Hallelujah. That's the whole purpose of ministry. So, the theme of our program to be about Christ. The mission statement should be about Christ. The name of our church should be about Christ. Hallelujah. We are royal priesthood. Should be about Christ. Hallelujah. Everything, everything should be about Christ. Hallelujah. And God will grant you wisdom. And we expand the work. As a church, should we teach success 
Into 